Hello, calculus students. Uh, let's see, today we are working through unit two, free response question set A. You may have enjoyed this one. It brought back some good memories. Let's read carefully what we're given here. We are given f is a continuous function defined between negative one and eight, and there's the graph of f. And you're given that that function is made up of two line segments. That's key information in just a moment. We're given this function g of x, and we're given this function h of x. All right, uh, let's see. Part a is a three-point problem. The function k is defined by k of x is equal to f of x times g of x, and we're asked to find k prime of 0. All righty. So, if k of x is equal to f of x times g of x, and we're asked to find k prime of 0, that means that we need a product rule to find the derivative k prime of x. Since k of x is a product, we'll need a product rule to find the derivative. <clears throat> what was the product rule? If you remember, that was the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. We're asked to find k prime of zero, so k prime of zero will be f of zero times g prime of zero plus g of zero times f prime of zero. That means, okay, let's use our graph to find f of zero. To find f of zero, when x is zero, my output is 3 times g prime of 0. Let me jot down what was g of x. g of x was the square root of x squared minus x plus 3. <clears throat> and we need g prime of 0. Okay, I'm going to rewrite g of x as x squared minus x plus 3 to the 1 half. And let's use that power rule. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's use that. There's g of x. g of x written as a with a rational exponent. Let's use that power rule to find the derivative g prime of x will be, bring that exponent out, x squared minus x plus 3 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside. That's that chain rule. The derivative of what's inside is 2x minus 1, giving us g prime of x is equal to what stays up and what goes down below. 2x minus 1 stays up, 2 is down below, and so is the square root of x squared minus x plus 3. But we need g prime of 0. So g prime of 0 will be 2 times 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, all over 2 times the square root of 0 minus 0 plus 3. And that's g prime of 0. <clears throat> Coming back over here to my product rule, f of 0 is 3, g prime of 0 is negative 1 over 2 square roots of 3, plus what is g of 0? g of 0, I can use my function itself which is, let me find it up here, g of 0, which will be the square root of 0 minus 0 plus 3, which is the square root of 3. So g of 0 is the square root of 3. I need f prime of 0. f was that graph. Let's find f prime of 0. What is f prime? It's the derivative. It's the slope of the tangent line. It's the slope of the tangent line when x is equal to 0. That's why this was important. This function is made up of line segments. So if I'm finding the derivative, the slope of the tangent line when x equals 0, that's just the slope of this linear function. And the slope of that linear function right there is what? Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. The slope is equal to 2. Just reading it off that graph. So f prime of 0 is 2. That gives me that k prime of 0 is equal to, what is that? Negative 3 over 2 square roots of 3 plus 2 square roots of 3. Uh, we don't have to go any further than this because if you remember, in the directions, 
all answers need not be simplified. So rather than making some computational error trying to simplify this, I'm just going to stop and leave my solution just as is. The points by AP they awarded for this part of this question, you got one point to, for finding F prime of zero. There's one point. You earned a point if you correctly found G prime of zero. That's a point, either as a decimal or as a fraction. And you got one point for finding K prime of zero. Either as that non-simplified answer or as a decimal was fine. And remember, some of you may have missed this. You did something wrong right here. So that means that this would be incorrect in your work, but you can still earn this point from a correct product rule, even if that part of it was incorrect. All right, so there's your three points for part A. Let's move on to part B. Okay, part B, also a three point part, gives us a function m of x, which is defined as f of x over two times g of x, and we're asked to find m prime of five. All righty. If m of x is defined as this quotient, then remember we need our good old quotient rule. m prime of x will equal, what was that quotient rule? It was the denominator, 2 times g of x, times the derivative of the numerator, f of x, I'm sorry, f prime of x, minus the numerator, f of x, times the derivative of the denominator. It is a little product rule, but two times the derivative of the second, two times the derivative of the second, plus second times the derivative of the first would be zero. So the derivative of the denominator is simply two g prime of x. Quotient rule, what was the denominator? That is the denominator all over the denominator squared. Okay, take a moment if you would. I need to find m prime of five, so I simply plugged in five into that quotient rule up above. And now I'm gonna start plugging in. So m prime of five will equal to two times g of five. Let me pause for a second. What was g of x? Let me find that. Okay, just for the sake of time. Two times g of five, there was my g of, five, g of x function. So g of five will be 25 minus five plus three, and g of five is the square root of 23. Okay, so two times the square root of 23 times f prime of five. That's the derivative using your graph of f of x, and we want f prime of five. The slope of the tangent line when x is equal to five right here, what is that slope? Looks like down two over three. So that slope is negative two thirds. Slope of the tangent line on that graph at five is negative two thirds minus f of five. What was the function value at five? Function value is five. Okay, so that's five times two g prime of five. In that previous part A, we found g prime. Now we want g prime of five, which will be two times five is 10 minus one is nine, all over two times the square root of, what did we get when we plugged in five? What was that, the square root of 23? And g prime of five is nine over two square roots of 23, all over the quantity two times g of five, g of five was root 23 squared. Pause and make sure we're okay. Okay, and let's see how much we wanna simplify this without making a mistake. So if I multiply these two things together, I get negative four square roots of 23 over three, minus, those twos will cancel, 45 over the square root of 23, all over two squared, which is four, times the square root of 23 squared, which is 23. I might stop there. AP did say that that rounds to negative 0.171. Again, this was a three-point question. You got a three for that final answer, arriving at the correct final answer. 
You got one point. I'm sorry. You also got a point. What did we get a point for in this one? We got a point for finding F prime of 5. Remember, that just came from the graph. And that was a point. And you got a point for finding G prime of 5. Where is that? G prime of 5 gave you a point. You could also approximate that as 0.938. Earned you a point right there for your three points on part B. All right, let's finish off with part C. Okay, uh, part C is a two-point question. Find the value of x between negative 1 and 2 so that f prime of x is equal to h prime of x h prime of x. Okay, this was a fun one. Uh, let's see, let me get some scratch paper here. Between negative 1 and 2, f prime of x, what is f prime? f prime is the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line, since this is linear, remember, was just 2. Okay, so on that interval, f prime of x is equal to 2. And I am given that h of x, now I need that function, h of x was... 5e to the x minus 9 sine of x. And I need to find where f prime of x is equal to h prime of x. So that means I need to find h prime. h prime of x is equal to first times the derivative of the second, but the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x, plus second times the derivative of the first, which is 0. Okay, So there's that derivative. Similar over here minus first times the derivative of the second, derivative of a sine is cosine of x, plus second times the derivative of the first would be zero. So that is the derivative h prime of x. When is f prime of x equal to h prime of x? When is h prime of x equal to f prime of x, which was two? On that interval. Okay, so I need to solve this equation. How on earth would I solve that equation? I'm going to pick up my graphing calculator and I'm going to plug this side into y1 and this side into y2. 5e to the x minus 9 cosine of x. Please take a moment and plug that into your graphing calculator y1, y2. You need to be in radian mode. I like zoom trig. So radian mode and zoom trig, and let's see what that graph looks like. Okay, with y1 and y2, I hit zoom trig. There's more to this graph, but if I just look on that interval I wanted between negative 1 and 2, my graph looks something like this. For what x value are those two things equal? I want to calculate, if you would, the intersection. So pick up your graphing calculator, calculate the intersection of those two things, and I find that x is approximately equal to 0.622. All right, in this two-point problem, you can probably guess by now where your two points came from. Your two points came from one point for correctly finding that derivative, h prime of x, and then you got a single point for calculating that intersection. All righty but show them something, how you calculated that point of intersection. Alrighty, thanks for tuning in. Uh, let's see, and have a great day.